This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. Good. Feil Chen Chanukah. I want to thank my good you did, Rav Moshe Portnoy, for inviting me here today. Me and Rav Moshe were on many holy adventures around the world. And uh, I thank him for the opportunity. Tonight's shir is sponsored by Nishmas Avram Shmuel Binyam Ben Yitzchak Aryeh, sponsored by A and R Bam. We wish them the Shalom Shem and Aliyah. Shvil Meil Tzioisher for the whole family. Abiyas Goel Tzadak. So Zoyis Chanukah. What exactly is the Zoyis Chanukah? What's so significant about it? What's so special about it? It's the kind of day people they want to connect to, but they're not exactly sure what they're connecting to. The Munkacha brings down Zois Chanukah. Zois stands for Tamu Zuchus Avois. On this day, there are no more Zuchusim. Tamu Zuchus Avois. Doesn't sound like a good thing if Tamu Zuchus Avois. But we know whenever it's Tamu Zuchus Avois, you could always access the Rachamei Shemayim. In fact, there is an amazing remez to Chanukah, which is virtually unknown. The remez is Slachno Laavoin Haom Hazeh. Kegoidel, Chazdecha, Vichasher, Nososa. Rashi Tevo is Chanukah. You ever hear that one? Slachno, Lavoin, Hom, Haze, Kegoidel, Chazdecha, Vichasher, Nososa. Yud Gimel Midois Harachavim. It's virtually unknown. It's in Likute Maran. That's the remez to Chanukah. That Chanukah, it's Tammuz, Chusa voice, but you could access Yud Gimel Midois Harachavim. In fact, Arizal says, then the first night of Hanukkah, when you light, you're mechaving to the first of Yirgim Omidus Rachamim, the second night, the second, the third night, the third. And what do you do on the eighth night, so it's Hanukkah? You're mechaving, you'll remember this for next year, you're mechaving for the remaining uh, six Yirgim Omidus Rachamim. So the Iker Rachamim, the Iker Hazek, Hegoida, Chastecha, Vachasher, Nososa, is on Zoyz Hanukkah. So I want to tell you Chassam Soifer. This is also not such a well known Chassam Soifer. This is found in a little sefer called Menhage Chassam Sefer. My grandfather passed away this year. Let's just say he was 100 years old a very long time ago. He was a Talmud Muvuk of Ramanachem Zemba. Um, ben Bayes by Ramanachem Zemba. He had smicha before the Holocaust. And when he was liberated, the American army made him the head of something called the Offenbach Library, which is basically Hitler gathered all the Sfarim in Europe into a central repository, and Hitler had in mind he's going to make, after he eradicates all the Jews in Europe, he was going to make a museum, what Judaism used to look like. And, uh, and my grandfather was in charge of this library after the war, and he brought back many of the Svarim. He was a rub in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. So I had a, uh, access to a lot of interesting Svarim. This Sefer is not particularly a unique Sefer. It's available in any store, but that's where I got it from. Menhagech Sam Soifer. Says Menhagech Sam Soifer. Of the whole year, you need to be mechazek and limer Torah more on Hanukkah than any other day. Because during this time, the Yitzhahara tries to be mafria people from learning more than any other time. And that's why you see people get involved in all kinds of card games and all kinds of nonsense. Why? Because the Iker Yitzhahara against Talmud Torah is on Hanukkah. Okay, fine. Very nice. And Hanukkah was in this guy, and we know, Lahoydah, Sulahalel, great. Says the so he drops a bombshell. Learning on Hanukkah is an Indian Gadol, ki oz nimsuru soidois ha toira lamoish rabbeinu. Half love a fella. When did the Rebbe Hashem teach Moish Rabbeinu the secrets of the Torah? On Hanukkah. That's Chassam Sefer. Half love a fella. What's Chassam Sefer talking about? Hashem taught Moshe the secrets of Torah on, on Hanukkah? Mehechi Tesi. What's the makar for such a thing? Moshe Rabbeinu went up to Har Sinai three times. First time he went up, Rishchayda, um, he went up on Shavuos. He came down, Erev Shavuos Sabbatah, he sees Kali Yisrael worshipping the Egal. As far as I know, Hanukkah does not fall, fall out between Shavuos and Shavuos Sabbatamas. Then Moshe Rabbeinu goes up another time. Yerches Tamos, he comes back, Erev Rishchayda Elol. As far as I know, and where I come from, Long Island, over there, I was in Queens, I was in Flatbush, I visited Lakewood very rarely because it takes about 10 hours to get here, but uh, on the belt, and then the Garden State, I don't know, people, it, Lakewood's basically out of town, it's like going to uh, Baltimore. But, um, 
Sorry. And even in Lakewood, Hanukkah does not come out in between uh, the, the 18th day of, of Tammuz and Rosh Chodesh Elul. And Hanukkah doesn't come out between Rosh Chodesh Elul and Yom Kippur either. So what's Chassam Sefer talking about? Hashem taught Moshe Rabbeinu the secrets of Torah on Hanukkah. When exactly? Well, Hashem made an appointment with Moshe Rabbeinu to teach him the secrets of Torah on Hanukkah. As far as we know, the Rebbe didn't teach anything to Moshe Rabbeinu on Hanukkah. What's Chassam Sefer talking about? That Hashem taught the secrets of Torah to Moshe Rabbeinu on Hanukkah. Half of a fella. It's impossible to crack this Chassam Sefer. Another kasha. This is one of the oldest questions in the book, but we're going to try to offer a new approach. We know there's no Masechta on Hanukkah. It's also very uh, difficult. Why is there no Masechta on Hanukkah? We know that Tamei Hamen Hagim quotes the Chassam Soifer, that Rabbi Yehuda Hanasi had perhaps personal reasons, or al Piruch HaKodesh, he didn't want to give Chashivos to uh, Hanukkah because the Chashmonam took away the Melucha, and the Chashmonam came from... Uh, Koyhanim, and they took it away from Malchus based David. So Rebbe, to be based David, Ka'asina, Rebbe came from the Malchus based David. He didn't want to give credit to the Chashmonam. We know Chanukah is mentioned how many times in the Mishnah? Six times in the Mishnah. Chanukah is only found one time in the whole Zayar HaKadosh. Why, why are we hiding Chanukah? There's no Masechta. It's barely discussed in the Gemara. By the way, and even the Gemara that says what Hanukkah is, the Gemara, my Hanukkah, you know what it says Hanukkah is? L'shana acheres, kavum v'asam, yom toivim, v'halel uvhoida. Oh, and I forgot to say you light the menorah. So here you have, finally waiting, the whole shas. There's not one masechta, there's not one parak, and you have a little story, and you would expect, okay, there were the kaveh to light the menorah, the Gemara forgot to say you light the menorah in Hanukkah. The whole Gemara about Hanukkah, it doesn't say you're supposed to light the menorah. Ad kadei kach, that some achorinim say, you know what, they were never masakin to light the menorah. That came much later in history. Rabbi Shulam Mikutna, Rabbi Sternbach has a piece on this. Could be they were never mas- Why is Hanukkah so top secret? There's no masechta. It's barely mentioned in the Mishnah. The Zohar HaKadosh says at one time, by the way, in passing Agav Orcha. Are we trying to hide something? Is something... Moshe Rabbeinu understood the whole Torah. He understood the whole Mishkan. When HaKadosh Baruch Hu told Moshe Rabbeinu about the Shulchan and all the intricacies of the Shulchan, Moshe Rabbeinu said, okay, I hop, I got it, I understand how to make the Shulchan. When Hashem told Moshe Rabbeinu about the Aroin and the Kruvim and how to carve it out, Moshe Rabbeinu said, I got it. But when it comes to the Menorah, Hashem says to Moshe, V'zeh masa ha-Menorah, sakt Rashi, neskashe Moshe be Moshe did not understand what the Rebbe Hashem wanted with the Menorah. What exactly was Moshe Rabbeinu's kasha? Why is the Menorah more difficult to understand than other Chalakim of Torah, other parts of the Mishkan, other parts of the Mikdash? What exactly was so difficult to understand about the Menorah? Here's another Kasha. What's the Halacha? You know, you, uh, you come out of your car and your glasses are foggy. Are you allowed to use your talus to wipe your glasses? Many posts can say, yeah, what's wrong? It's not a bizarre, and you're, just, you're cleaning your glasses. That's a discussion. What's a halacha with a shoifar? When it's after Rosh Hashanah, you want to siphon off some, uh, some Coca-Cola from the bottle into your cup. You're allowed to pour it through a shoifar? Why not? Why not? What's a halacha? What do you do with a shoifar when you're finished with it? Me'ikar hadin. Nizrakin. You could put in the garbage. How about a talus? You're finished with a talus. Me'yikar I'm not talking about hither. I'm not talking about the Ramah. Me'yikar adin. You're finished with the talus. What do you do with it? Nizrakin. Get thrown in the garbage. Okay, we don't do that. We try to treat it nicely. You dispose of it. But they're covered. But it's not halachically required. Me'yikar adin. Tashmishe mitzvah. Nizrakin. Are you allowed to be nene from a tashmish shal mitzvah? Avada. Why not? Lulav. You allowed to be nene from it? Why not? You allowed to be nene from it? You have an itch on your hand. You want to scratch your hand. It's Asr L'Hishtamesh. It's not Asr L'Hishtamesh. And the Chanukah Lecht, Asr L'Hishtamesh L'Aira. Why? Why is Asr L'Hishtamesh L'Aira? There's no Isr to be Mishtamesh with any Chavtza Shal Mitzvah. Why are you now to be Mishtamesh with the 
item of the of the menorah. All the Yomim Tovim, either middle of the month, beginning of the month. Hanukkah is in a unique location on the calendar. The 25th day of the month. What's Pshat? It's on the 25th day of the month. So let's start in the following way. When HaKadosh Baruch Hu created the world, so it says, Vayom Elohim Yehira Kebesech HaMayim What happened? Vayihi Kain It was so. Vayom Elohim Yehi Ma'orois Vayihi Kain by every single act of creation, the Rosh Hashanah said, let it be. It was, it was, with one exception. It doesn't say, it says, what happened? Did something go wrong? So Rashi picks up on it. Rashi says, Vayavdel, the Rebani Shalom saw that it's not Kedai that this light should be enjoyed by the Rishayim, so Hashem put it away for the Tzadikim La'asadlavai. This is what is known as the Arhaganos. So there's a special light, the primordial light, the light of creation, that the Rebani Shalom wanted the world to be Nene from, but then the Rebani Shalom says, it's not Kedai that the world should be Nene from such light, so Hashem put it away. Zuck the Malbim, that's why it says, Vayoimer Lekim Yehi Or. But it wasn't Vayihi Chain. The Rebbe Shem wanted there to be a special Or Agonos. But then the Rebbe Shem saw it, the world cannot use that Or Agonos. So it wasn't Vayihi Chain, it was just Vayihi Or. So in other words, the light was not how the Rebbe Shem intended it. The Rebbe Shem intended it to be this supernatural light that we know this light, Yeroya Me, Soifa Oilam Biat Soifa. And Hashem saw it couldn't be Vayihi Chein, Vayom Elokim Yihi Ar, Vayihi Ar. Fine. Does anybody know? This original light, how long did it last? How long did it illuminate the world? The original light of creation, how long did it illuminate? So you would think, well, the Rebbe Shalom said Yihi Ar on the first day of creation, so it must have lit up the world for... Six days. But the Yushalmi tells us that the Arhagonos only lasted for 36 hours. What are the 36 hours? 12 hours on Friday. 12 hours Lel Shabbos. 12 hours Yom Shabbos. And then Hashem put it away. The original light of creation only existed for 36 hours. Says the Roy Keach, the Remez is... On the first test of the Torah, there are four tagim, four times tests is 36. So the original light of creation lasted for 36 hours. And obviously then, there's some kind of connection between the 36 Neiros of Hanukkah and the original light of creation. Somehow when we light Lamed Vav Neros of Hanukkah, somehow we bring out the 36 hours of the original light that the Or HaGonos serviced the world. And that's what we would like to investigate. You know, the Gemara says in Masech Danida that what is a Vlad like B'mei Imai? So it says a Malach comes, it lights a candle on his head. With this candle the child could see Me Soifa Oilam, Viyad Soifai. And the Malach teaches a child, Kula. And when the child is born, the Malach comes, Vesatrai Alpiv, he smacks him in the mouth. And everybody thinks it means this, it has nothing to do with that. The Nasivus writes, it's a mashal. It means he clobs him over the head. Most people, if they get punched in the mouth, they don't forget anything. When they get a concussion, they forget something. So the Malach comes, the Nasivus says, he hits him on the head. Piv is a mashal for the head. He hits him over the head. The baby forgets everything. And the kasha is, why, what happened to the candle? You ever wonder about that? Here the Gemara says, when the child's b'me'ima, he has the candle on his head, and the malach teaches him ka'at terakula. And then when he's born, the malach smacks him, he makes him forget ka'at terakula. Where's the candle? What happened to the candle? That's the kasha, the samarab. So let's try to investigate all of this. 
And let's try to see if the original light of creation lasted for 36 hours. Where did the light go? Where did the light go? Where is the light? So we call it Or Hagonos. It's hidden. It's in a secret place. It's in a, it's in a stash. It's stowed away. So the first thing we have to understand is what does the word Gonos mean? What is Gonos? So simply we think that Gonos means it's hidden. It's like in a... It's in a vault, it's in a safe deposit box, nobody could access it, it's not available, nobody knows where it is. And Rav Hudner famously writes, Gonuz does not mean completely hidden. Gonuz means it's functioning on a more undisclosed way, but it's still accessible. Here's, a, here's an example. We know that a hundred years before the end of the first base of Mikdash, the Arain was hidden by Yoshio HaMalach. And we presume that in the times of the second base of Mikdash, there was no Arain. The problem is that then you can't have a base of Mikdash, because the base of Mikdash's Kedusha comes from the Arain. So how did they have a second base of Mikdash? They didn't have the Arain. So Ryakov Kamenetsky says, well, of course they had the Arain. The Mishnah says in Shkalem, the Kohanim were walking and they saw one of the floorboards was out of place. And the Kohen was about to say, oh, it's over there. And he died, so he couldn't tell anybody where it was. But they knew exactly where it was. They knew where the Arn was. And even the Rambam says that Shalom Melech hid it in an underground tunnel, an underground labyrinth. So there was an Arayim. And the Arayim, many knew where it was. It just wasn't as obvious as in the times of the first base of Mikdash. So nignaz doesn't mean hidden that nobody knows where it is. It means it's now functioning on a more undisclosed way. So if the Rebbeinu Shalom hid the light of creation, that light that lasted for 36 hours, then we got to find out, where is it? You know, where, where did he put it? Where did it go? Where is this Arhagonas? So let's take a look at number 14. The Medrash Tanchuma writes, Everybody knows this Medrash Tanchuma. This is the most ma- famous Medrash Tanchuma in the whole Medrash. That there's a stira. When the Rebbein Shalom offered us the Torah, we said, well, we said, Nasev and Ishma. And on the other hand, the Gemara says in Shabbos, on Peiches, Kofa Leim Har Kigigis. So what's the answer to the stira? Torah Shabachsav, we said, Nasev and Ishma. Torah Shabal Peh, was Kofa Leim Har Kigigis. And then the Medrash Tanchuma goes on to say, that if somebody wants to learn Tar Shabal Peh, then you have to be Yogeya, you have to be Amel. Nobody ever had an understanding of Tar Shabal Peh without great Amelos. And says the Medrash Tanchuma, the original light of creation, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, was Goines in the Torah. Look at number 15. Says the Eitz Yosef, that he heard from the Magid Sedek, that the original light from with which you're able to see, me soif ha'olam v'yad soifai, the Rebbeinu Shalom hid b'tayraseinu akdasha. So, if you want to know where is the Aragonos, it's in the Torah. By the way, the Nefesh Chaim also, the Nefesh Chaim quotes the Zara Kadosh, the end of number sixteen, Mavayar bezayar sha'ar nignaz ba'iraisa. The original light of creation, it's hidden in the Torah. Chaim Velazhin writes to the Hakdama, to the Shnois Eliyahu, that the Ar Hagonos was hidden in the Torah. Okay, good. So now we know it's in the Torah. That now narrows it down to hundreds of thousands of Svarim. So now the question is, where exactly, you know, let's, let's narrow it down a little bit further. Where exactly, in which book, is the Ar Hagonos? So it seems like it's in the Torah Shabbat Peh. We're in the Torah Shabbat Peh. So basically, this is one of the most spoken about themes in all of the writings of the Bnei Yisrael. We mentioned there's no Masech on Hanukkah. The Mishnah mentions Hanukkah about six times. The Zayra Kadosh only mentions Hanukkah one time in passing. And the Bnei Yisachar has more to say about Hanukkah than any other subject. About a third of the entire Bnei Yisachar are Mamorim on Hanukkah. And he's very uh, baffled by this question, especially because he feels that he comes from Shevet Yisachar. You know that. Bnei Yisachar says that he personally comes from Shevet Yisachar, even though the tradition is that Kalah Yisrael today either comes from Yehuda or Levi 
or a few from Binyamin. He says he comes from Yisachar. And since Bnei Yisachar, Bnei... He's mechadesh that the Sheva Yisachar was born on Chanukah. And he's very bothered. Why is there no Masechta on Chanukah? And where exactly is this R? Says the Bnei Yisachar, I'm going to tell you something from three all-time great Bali Ruach HaKodesh, and they all say the same thing. Here are the three Bali Ruach HaKodesh. Number one, the Rekeach. The Rekeach is called Rabbi Lezer Migarmaiza. Say, what's, where's Garmaiza? There's no place in the world called Garmaiza. I know of a place, Varmaiza. Me and Moishi, we, we, were, we went to Varmaiza, we went to Worms. We, where do we go? Marami Rotenberg, the Baal Shem. Where else do we go? Achlaner. Varmaiza, the, the Maril. Uh, Rashi's, Rashi's house. So what, what, it's called Varmaiza. Why is Rebbe Lezer called, called Rebbe Lezer Mi Garmaiza? So the answer is like this. The Chida writes that originally the name of the location was Garmaiza. But there was a dragon. And this dragon, every day he used to eat a Yid. So uh, the, the, the dragon would sit on the outside of the base medrash and nobody could go in until the dragon would eat a Yid. The Chida writes this in his diary. They would feed the, the dragon a yid, and then shachris would start. They have a kachava every day. Until one day, a guy, one guy had enough. He couldn't, it's not, it's not right that every day somebody should get eaten. So he decided he's going to vanquish the dragon. And he went inside the dragon with a sword, and he ripped the dragon to shreds from the inside. And from then on, it was no longer called Garmaiza, it was called Varmaiza, after the dragon of Garmaiza. So at least you learned something tonight, right? So... The, the Roikeach had Giloy Eliyahu, all the Ramazim of the Roikeach. For example, anybody ever count the number of words in Al Hanisim? The Roikeach counts 125 words. Gematria Yoichanan. Yoichanan is actually Gematria 124. Mibnei An Vesanusa, he wrote a, a, a tefillah with one more word than the gematria of his name. These are all from the Rekech. The Rekech counts the number of words of every segment of tefillah. So the Rekech was a Baal Ruach HaKodesh. The second Baal Ruach HaKodesh... Who? No, uh, not, it, it doesn't work out according to any Nusach you'll ever see. <laughs> but that's what he says. <laughs> that's what Eliyahu Novi told him. You can't ask on it. But it, it, it doesn't fit. Then, then the other Baal Ruach HaKodesh is Reb Pinchas Karatzer, who also was a Baal Ruach HaKodesh. And the third one is the Maral of Prague, who used the Sefer HaYetzirah. They all say as follows, that the 36 hours that the original light of creation serviced the world was Nignaz in the Torah. We're in the Torah in the 36 Mesechtos of Shas. How many Masechtas of Gemara are there? There are 36 Masechtas of Gemara. This is a major discussion in the Paiskim. How many Masechtas are there? Shal Suchuvas, Mari Asad, the first Chuva. 36 Masechtas. The Berhetev, Hilchos Lulav. You take the Lulav, Lamed Vav, Lamed Vav, 36, and you put it on your lave. Lutzk, Lamed Vav Masechtas, for Tzadikim and Kadoshim. That's a well known remez, right? So Lamed Vav are the 36 Masechtas. The 36 Masechtas contain the 36 hours that the original light of creation serviced the world. This is the Hisgalos of Reb Pinchas Karatzer, the Reikeach, and the Maral So that means every time a person learns Gemara, they're bringing to fruition, they're accessing the original light of creation. How is it possible that Sadiqim, you know, the Briskarov, they said that the Briskarov was able to see 50 years ahead. What's the shot that Tzadikim could see into the future? They could see from one end of the world into the other end of the world. The Baal Shem was able to see what's going on in Eretz Yisrael. How is that possible? Because when a person learns Shas, you know, the Baal Shem Tov says, the Baal Shem, people misunderstand what Hasidus is. You want to know what Hasidus is? Kloisenberger Rebbe said, the Mesoira of Hasidus, is that when was Hashem nizgale to Avraham Avinu? Ooh, Avraham Avinu was probably being misboided, his boididus. Come on. Avraham Avinu, Hashem did not come to Avraham Avinu only when Avraham Avinu was learning Mesechta Yivamas. 
That's the Baal Shem Tov. That's Chasidus, says the Klezim Rebbe. Chasidus is Gemara Ba'amelos. That's a... If I would have said, you know, Rev. Aaron Cutler said that, uh, come on, you know. I'm saying the Kloisenberg Rebbe says, what's Hasidus? Gemara Ba'amelus. That's how Avram Avinu had his Galas Alekim. Anyway, the 36 hours that the original light of creation serviced the world was hidden in the Lamed Vav Mesechtais. Says the Sama Rebbe. You know, everybody's Matmi on the Gemara Nida that when Hashem creates the embryo, so the Malach teaches him Kala Terakula. Viner Dolok Al Roisha and he sees me Saifai Lamiyat Saifai. And then the Gemara says the Malach comes and he makes him forget everything. And what happened to the candle? He says now nothing happened to the candle. There is no candle. There's no candle. The light with which the child is able to see me, Saifa and that Saifai, is because he knows Kalatairakula, that's Bihiloi Neiroi Ale Roishi. That's the light with which he sees me Saifa Ilam. So once the Malach is Meshakeach Kol Kula, the kid can't see anything. There's no actual candle with which the child sees. The candle is the result of his Yediyah Satayr. So again, the light of creation, the original light of creation, is Nignaz in the Torah Shabbat Peh. When a person learns Torah Shabbat Peh, then he has some ri'ia and some haskala and some ability to understand and to see what's happening in the world. Was there ever a time in history that the original light of creation came out into fruition? Did it ever come out? Says the Malbim, you know, we said that the Shem, or created the world, he wanted the light to service the world. Vayoymer lekem yihiyar. And the Rebbein Shem wanted it to say, Vayihichin. But he couldn't. So it says, Vayihiyar. But tomorrow, in the longest weekday Kriyas HaToyra of the year, the only Kriyas HaToyra will reviolate a major rule in Hilchos Kriyas HaToyra, and that is, you never lane through a parsha. Anybody familiar with the time that you're going to lane and run through a red light? The end of the parsha is a red light. It's a psuchor stuma. It's more than that. It's the end of the parsha. Tomorrow's Kriyas HaToyra violates the most basic law of Kriya that you have to stop at the end of the parsha. Tomorrow you go through the red light. No points. No fine. Straight through. Um, we're going to lane tomorrow, says the Malbum, that even though on the original act of creation, Vayir Malekim Yihi Ar, it should have said Vayihi Chen, it says no, Vayihi Ar, Vayas Kain Aroin says the Malbim in the Eretz Chemda. When Aroin lit the Menorah, you know what he did? The original Vayehi Chain that it should have said, that it should have said, Vayoymer Lakim Yehiar Vayehi Chain, it didn't say Vayehi Chain. Vayas Kain Aroin, he brought out the Aragonos into the world through the Hadlaka of the Menorah. What did Aroin do? Kain also is Hamenorah. He brought out the cane. When Aaron lit the menorah, he brought out the Aragonos. Now what does the menorah have to do with the Aragonos? Ha, huh. because the menorah, we have two kalim in the Mikdash. We have the Aaron and we have the menorah. The Aaron brings out the light of Tar Shavachsav. The menorah brings out the light of Tar Shavachsav. Shas. There was a great man by the name of Rabbi Tarfain. He had a Talmud. The Talmud asked the good kasha. What did Rav Tarfin say? Kaftor v'ferach. What does a good kash have to do? He said, listen to what he said. He said, buttons and knobs. Buttons and flowers. Why did Rav Tarfin say kaftor v'ferach? Says in the the hashpa of the Torah Shabal Peh came to Klal Yisrael through the medium of the Menor HaKadoshah. So Rav Tarfin understood that these little decorations of the menorah, that was the vehicle with which Torah Shabbat Peh was Nishba and Kalal Yisrael. So when Rav Tarfin heard somebody had a good kasha, he said, you know where you got that from? You get that from Kaftar V'Ferach. So let's make a little cheshben. We know the menorah had many decorations. Anybody know? How many geviyim on the menorah? There are 22 Gevi'im on the Menorah. How many Kavtoyerim on the Menorah? Here, I made you a nice picture. 
Take a look at number 38. We have a picture of the Menaira. So how many goblets? You have 22 Gevi'im on the Menaira. How many knobs? How many buttons? You have 11 Kavtairim. How many Prachim? How many flowers? 9 Prachim. So let's add it up. You have 22 Gevi'im. You have 11 Kavtairim. You have 9 Prachim. How many does that add up to? 42. 22, 11, 9. 42. And then you have 7 Konim. So how many details are there on the Menorah? There are 49 details on the Menorah. What's the significance of 49 details on the Menorah? Says the Gra. The Gemara tells us in Rosh Hashanah. Chamishim sha'are vina nevru ba'ilam. There are 50 gateways of wisdom. Kulam nitnu l'moyshe. Moyshe got all of them. Chosar achas. Except for one. Shenemar. So there are 50 gateways of wisdom. Moshe knew all of them except for the 50th gate. Says the Gain. What was the vehicle with which Rebbe Hashem taught Moshe the 50 gateways of wisdom except for one? The Menorah. Each detail of the Menorah was a different branch of Chachma. So you have 22 Gevi'im, 11 Kaftorim, 9 Prachim, Seven kanim, you have a total of 49 components of the Menorah. Each component of the Menorah is another shar of Bina. So Moshe Rabbeinu, you know why Moshe was Niskasha be Menorah, says the Gain. The Gra wants to know, what, what was the big kasha on the Menorah? What's so difficult with the Menorah? Says the Gra, the Menorah has 49 parts. But the totality and the Menorah as an entity is the 50th Shah of Bina. Moshe didn't know the 50th Shah of Bina. So Moshe didn't know the 50th Shah of Bina. Moshe was Neskasha the Menorah. Moshe didn't understand the Menorah. What does that mean? He knew all the Prachim. He knew all the Kaftorim. He knew all the Gevi'im. He knew all the Kanim. But he didn't know Menorah Atzma because Menorah Atzma is the 50th Shah of Bina. So the Rebbein Shem had to tell Moshe, "Bizeh Masa Amenoira," which means, "I'm going to teach you now the fiftieth Sharabina." Listen to this album. Everyone is bothered. Everyone and their third cousin asks, you know, "Vayas Kain Aroin." What does what does Rashi say? "Lahagid Shivcha Shal Aroin Shaloi Shina." Oh, look at the goddess of Aroin. Hashem said, light the menorah, and Aaron lit the menorah. What, what would you think Aaron would do? Hashem said, light the menorah, and Aaron took a vacation? Of course Aaron's going to light the menorah. It's a shvach that Aaron was loishina. Listen to the album. You know what it means, Aaron loishina? Hashem told the world, Vayar melikim yihiyar. But the world didn't listen. It wasn't vayihichain. It was vayihiyar. Not until Aaron came and Vayas Cain Aaron, Aaron made it that the world was not Mishana from the intended purpose of the Bria of Ar. Hashem wanted the Ar to be the Ar Haganos, but it couldn't, so Hashem had to stow it away. So Hashem said, Vayyam al Yihi Ar. It wasn't Yihi Chain. Comes Aaron, Vayas Cain Aaron. So Melamid Shivcha Shal Aaron Shaloishina from Hashem's original plan for Bria Sa'ilam. That means when Aaron lit the menorah, he brought out the Arhagonos. He brought out the original light of creation. So Moshe got every single detail of the menorah because he knew 49 Sha'ar Mabina. The 50th Sha'ar he didn't understand. Moshe never knew the 50th Sha'ar. But apparently, even Moshe, at one point in his life, understood the 50th Sha'ar. You know, the the Shla Kodesh brings, that Moshe's whole life, he basically only knew 49 Sharma Bina. But on the, his last day, Vayal Moshe Me'ar Vois, Moyav is 49, El Har Nevoi Nun Boy. So on his final day, he got the 50th Shah. He gave it over to Yehoshua, not Ben Nun, Bin Nun, says Uchsam Soifer. He was, he was Lehovin, the Shar Nun, that he learned from Moshe Rabin. When Moshe Rabbeinu went up to Har Sinai, Vayal Moshe, Vayidaber, Es Kol. Kol is all 50. But by the Chedah Ega, Hashem said, Leich Reid. 
go down from Lech, from 50, go down. So Moshe's always going up and down from 50 to 49, 50 to 49. He finally got it on his last day. But according to the Goyen, Moshe didn't understand the Menorah because Moshe didn't know the Shar Nun. But then it comes out that when Hashem said the following words to Moshe, He's telling him the Shar Nun. With which words? Vizeh Masa HaMenorah. In other words, Moshe didn't understand the Menorah. He didn't know the Shar Nun. And when Hashem said Vizeh Masa HaMenorah, Hashem's telling him the Shar Nun. Now what's the Shar Nun? What is it? It's a Soidoi Satoira. When do you think the Rebbeinu Shalom said the words V'zeh Masa HaMenorah to Moshe Rabbeinu? It should be very easy to find that out. Because that will be the day that Hashem told Moshe the, the Soi Des So let's make a cheshben. The end of Parshish Nasa, we read about the Chanukah Samizbeach. Vayam Arishoy Nachshem and Aminadav. Vayam Asheni, Vayam Ashlishin. Aaron is there and Aaron... What's Aaron's reaction to the Chanukah Samazbeach? He's Chalash Daite. He had Chalisha Sadash. And Hashem says, Nah, don't worry. Bahalois Chas, Hanerois, Shalcha, Gedoyle, Mishalahem. And in that context, when Hashem tells Moshe, Tell Aaron, Shalcha, Gedoyle, Mishalahem, Hashem tells Moshe, Vizem, Masa, Hamanoira. When is that? When do you think Aaron had Chalisha Sadash? Lachoira. On Rosh Chodesh Nisan, when, when the Chanukah Samizbeach started, Hashem told Moshe, here, here's the program. The first day in Akshan, the next day from Yisra, and so on. Hashem told Moshe the whole program. Hashem, uh, Moshe tells Aaron, and Aaron was Cholash Daite, and Hashem said, don't worry, so we would have presumed that when did Hashem tell Moshe, it would be Rosh Chodesh Nisan. But I think we could argue as follows. Yes, it happened, it was brought on Rosh Chodesh Nisan. But when was the Chanukah Samizbeach supposed to happen? What do Chazal say? They were supposed to be Mechanech, the, uh, the Mishkan and Mizbeach, on Chanukah. But Hashem said, you know what? Let's wait until Rosh Chodesh Nisan. Right? That's what Chazal say in the Medrash. But the whole parsha's Nosoim Ba'aloyscha was scheduled to happen on Hanukkah. So presumably when Hanukkah came, you think what happened was, Hashem tells Moshe, Moshe, something's supposed to happen today. I'm not telling you any information. Stay tuned until Rosh Chodesh Nisan. Probably not. I would presume what happened was, Hashem told Moshe, listen, we're going to do Chanukah Samizbeach. On the first day it's going to be Nachshah, on the second day from Shevi Sachar, for 12 days. And Moshe told Aaron what was supposed to have been and what will be delayed to Rosh Chodesh Nisan. And Aaron had Chalisha's Hadas on Chanukah. And how was Hashem Menachem, Moshe and Aaron on Chanukah? Hashem tells Aaron, Behalois Ches Hanerois, V'zeh Mase HaMenoira Mikshazav. And what was Hashem teaching Ara, uh, Moshe Rabbeinu by saying V'zeh Mase HaMenoira? He was teaching him the Sharnun. What's the Sharnun? Soidoi Satoira. Oh, we cracked the Chsam Soifer. What the Chsam Soifer means, that on Chanukah Hashem was Moiser, the Soidoi Satoira, to Moshe Rabbeinu. What that means is, because on Chanukah Hashem told Moshe Rabbeinu, V'zeh Masa HaMenoira. V'zeh Masa HaMenoira is the 50th branch of the Menoira, which is the Shar Nun, which is the Soidoi Satoira, which we would have thought was taught on Rosh Chodesh Nisan, but I think it's more correct to assume it happened on Chanukah. And now we understand what the Chassam Soifer means, why one has to be extra zahir to learn on Hanukkah, because on this day, Hashem taught Moshe Rabbeinu the one dimension of Torah he didn't understand the rest of his life. Namely, the Sharnun V'zeh Ma'asah HaManayra. Says the Shlach HaKadosh, that's why it's Asr L'Shtamesh L'Oira. Because when you light your menorah in your house, and you light 36 candles, and you bring out the original light of creation, that light is untouchable. That light needed to be stored away. It needed to be put away. It's loy roy l'hishtamesh. It needs to be nignaz. That's why it's also l'hishtamesh l'oira, because it has to be, um, follow the paradigm of the original light of creation. And that's why it's on the 25th day of Kislev. Because on what day did Hashem say, Yehi are? 
on Chafei Elul, and we know something doesn't come to fruition until three months later. So three months after Chafei Elul, when Hashem said Yehi Ar, is Chanukah, which was the Chinuch of the original lights of creation. And therefore tomorrow, we break the most basic rule in Kriya Satara. It's the only time. Usually in Kriya, in Limud, there are a cap, you know, you don't go there. You could learn the, the Shar Aleph, Shar Bey, Shar Gimel, but stop, you know, don't go too far. We don't want you reaching beyond. No reaching beyond. Don't go to the Shar Nun. Not on Zois Hanukkah. Zois Hanukkah is the climax of Moshe Rabbeinu's learning, the greatest Chelek HaToyra, the Soi Dois HaToyra, and therefore we say you finish the parsha you could go right through the red light. There are no limitations on Zoyz Hanukkah. You're allowed to conclude Parshas Nosoy and go straight into Parshas Beha Aloyzcha, says the Bnei Yisoschar in a different Sefer. Parshas Beha Aloyzcha is the 36th Parsha in the Torah. So tomorrow, after learning Parshas Nosoy, we go into the 36th, which is Soy Dois HaToyrah. Says the Gra, if you look at the Chumash itself, the Chumash itself is a Menorah. The first Pasuk in Bereshis has seven words. Those are the seven Kanim of the Menorah. The first Pasuk of Shemois has eleven words. Those are the eleven Kaftoirim of the Menorah. The first Pasuk of Vayikra has nine words. They're the nine Prachim of the Menorah. Bamidbar begins with 18 words because the menorah was Yerches Amos Tol or according to some 17 with the, with the base. And Devarim begins with 22 words, 22 Gevim. The Chachmas HaToyra was reflected and manifest and illuminated to the world through the medium of the menorah. If somebody has a good kasher of Tarfin says, Gevaldik, Kaftor Vaferach. The Chachma Satoira comes through the decor of the Menorah. And therefore, Chanukah is Leinitein Likasev. Why is Chanukah Leinitein Likasev? Because the purpose of lighting the Menorah is to go back to the Ur before it was put into the words of the Torah. So it can't be written because the purpose of lighting the Menorah is to go back to the time that the light predated its insertion into the Ksav Torah. And maybe we could say an original pshat why there's no Masechta for Hanukkah. You want to limit Hanukkah to one Masechta? Hanukkah is all 36 Masechtas. The light of Hanukkah is all Lamed Vav Masechtas. How could you limit it? How could you contain Hanukkah in one Masechta? That would be so mitigant, that would be so confining to Hanukkah. Hanukkah transcends one Masechta. Hanukkah encompasses all Lamed Vav Masechtas. Lamed Vav for Tzadikim and Kedoshim in this holy building. And therefore Hanukkah comes out in the month of Kislev. Case, it's hidden, Lamed Vav. The Lamed Vav original hours of creation. And in whose share, you know, the, the big cash is, so they, all the oil was tummy. So, so go, next go to the store, next door, and get new oil. All the oil in the Beis HaMikdash was tummy. So go to the Makolet and get, and get new oil. They only were tummy the oil in the Beis HaMikdash. Well, so go, go down the block. No, they had to go to Usher, because Usher makes Mahadran oil. And Usher is four days away and four days back. And how do I know that in the share of Usher... They have good oil, so the Pasuk says, Baruch ule asher amar, Baruch mi banam asher, yehi retzoi echa v'toyvel bashemen ragloi. How many letters do you think are on this Pasuk? Say the Kadmoinim. Avada, 36 oisios, in the Pasuk that talks about the, the oil in Shevet Asher. So therefore, on Zois Hanukkah, which is Tama Zuchos Avais, we're able to access a level of rachamim above and beyond zechus avais, which is hazeh kegoidel chasdecha v'chasher nasasa roshetevois chanuka. We're able to access the greatest rachamim. The greatest rachamim comes from limud atayra. You know how we know that? Because before you start shachris, what do you say as an introduction to shachris? 
Rabbi Shmuel Oimer, B'Sholosh Esrei Midois HaTor Nidreshes Baham. You want to access Yud Gimel Midois HaRachamim? You have to learn Yud Gimel Midois HaTor Nidreshes Baham. Al Yidei Limar HaTor, you're able to access the greatest Rachamim. And therefore, tonight, tomorrow, the highest Madregois of Limar HaTor, were Nimsar to Moshe, were Nimsar to Klal Yisrael, through the Hasbara of the words Vize Mase Hamanoira. So we should be Zoicha on this great day of Zois Chanukah to access that original light that we're all hoping for of Ar Chadash Al Tsiyoin Ta'ir, the light that the Yuban Shalom will bring us when we'll say Kiayin Ba'ayin Yiru B'Shuv Hashem Tsiyoin. And we should be Zoicha through the Yom Tov of Hanukkah, to a greater Devekos, to Tarasenu HaKadosha, and through that we should be Zoycha to all the Berchas HaToyra, Eruch Yom and Bimina, Smoila Oysheh V'Chavoyd, Hashem Oiz Amo Yitain, Hashem Yivarech, Hashem Oiz Amo Yitain, Hashem Yivarech,
You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.